Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chris and Andre Show. Uh, there's another person left a comment that uh, I don't I don't know what video it was, but they said the guy in the middle that was me. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know what he's talking about and i was like railing on something um oh. ladies, ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna give here's my disclaimer up front i say what i'm thinking and i don't oh it was, it was a james gunn video um i i don't necessarily swim downstream all the time yep. with all the fish it's just not gonna happen uh, I know James Gunn got a lot of acclaim for Guardians of the Galaxy. I still don't like it. Um, I know he got a lot of acclaim. Andre for- still feels that the second one somehow made the first movie worse. Yeah, I, that's just how I feel. But I will say this. I will circle back around to my opinion. Uh, James Gunn has, in recent weeks, said some pretty <laughs> decent things about stuff I care about. Um, taking shots. Yeah, so. It's your boy. Tight to why 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 T T. And every every time James Gunn is like sniping it, dude, I send like the, the link to Chris and Joe. So um Yep. John Vincent Eugenio. Yeah, so was thank- the person who commented. I don't really understand why the guy on the middle don't appreciate Guardians of the Galaxy duology enough. And I'm sending video essay links about it made by one of the best superhero video essay writer ever. Yeah, there were no <laughs> links. So just to say. Um, no, he did provide links. He, he did? Provided uh, links. Maybe yeah. I just ignored him. But High top films. Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Also, his the Suicide Squad video essay. Okay. So Thank I'll, me I'll, later I'll, if you understand James Gunn's writing and movies. Oh, that's what he said? Oh, I'm down. Yep. We're, now we have next week's episode. And yeah. I can shit all over James Gunn with ammunition. <laughs> um <laughs> So the guy in the middle says this, <laughs> the Chris and the guy in the middle show. Um, no, I. <laughs> that doesn't fit as well. No, it doesn't. I have a, I, I'm a firm believer in like my, just because I don't agree doesn't mean I don't respect. And the yeah. scent is not a negative thing. Right. You may talk all the shit about Taika Waititi and his, well, Taika Waititi's movies, but you still have a respect for him as a human being. Right. And you understand that he's producing art in a sense or producing content that you may not appreciate or you may not enjoy, but that doesn't mean that you don't think that there are other people out there that do. Exactly. I think there are parts of it where it becomes not personal, but disappointing because for you as such a fan of these characters so excited to see them brought to life on the big screen in you know by in uh real life that it it can be frustrating sometimes to feel like a disservice is maybe done to the character or that a aspects of the character are kind of diluted they're lost and lost yeah that's that's and I don't know. I'm putting a lot of words in your mouth. No, but I mean, you, you yeah. And I, I want to speak plainly. So, uh, like my, and I understand Marvel, even DC. Although I, I must say, I'm not excited about. Uh, I'm for some reason I'm not excited about, about Black Adam, Adam anymore. Um, the first trailer did not excite me the way that I thought it would. Yeah, um, but I understand Marvel's role is to. They're, what they're trying to accomplish is. Um, basically introduce people to the to the medium and, and to the the characters. So I I will always like default and say, but I'm probably sure they introduce Black Panther, Thor, Captain America to a bunch of people that never really understood those characters before. Um, yeah. Guardians right of the here. Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I get that nobody ever knew anything about Guardians of the Galaxy. That, before, if you weren't right? reading comic books, you didn't know who they were, right? Yeah, I had uh, no idea. The, I, mean, the, I have a Peacemaker comic right here. Because of the Suicide Squad, the, the, yeah, the Suicide Squad and the Peacemaker show. Like, that's the reason I own that comic right here. I have Eagly, right? I've got... 
these dudes. And now I'm starting to get into it more. And right. I'm trying to like not just look at that as the only source of content on these characters. I'm excited to learn more about right. them. And so, yeah, I totally agree. Like, it's not... You know, it's this, uh, we talked a lot about it on the representation episode, right? Where it's like every single piece of content that they produce isn't going to be a home run for everybody. And that's okay. You know, sometimes certain pieces of content are going to speak to certain audiences. Sometimes directors are going to take things in a certain direction. I think, I, I, I hesitate to say this because I feel like I'm undercutting everything that I've said in the past. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. I still I still really like Taika Waititi. I still really love Thor Ragnarok. Love and Thunder. I still have some issues with it. Like it was good, enjoyable, but the more that I've kind of ruminated on it, the more I feel like it was still lacking something, uh, uh, you know, like uh, a little or bit more substance. What you're trying to say is I was right. You you're not going to do it. Just just say I, uh, just say I was right. Just It'll make you were not right. Just, um, just make me. Feel. I don't know. Yeah, you probably were. I don't know, man. Like Joe's not here to back me up, and so I feel kind of like <laughs> I'm giving in. No, but um, I like I I don't know. Somebody was okay. So real quick, because I know this has nothing to do with the episode that we've been doing so far. We're like diving into it's, a bunch it's, of pop culture It's the big here. rant. It's the big rant. So we go wherever we go. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you heard or saw the announcement about Deadpool three. Yep, from Ryan Reynolds. Not excited. Right. right. Uh, and did you see the video of him and Hugh Jackman together? Yep. Still not excited. And did you notice that one of the pictures is with them and Taika Waititi? Yep. Is he going to direct Deadpool? 3? I hope not. I almost feel like. His style nope. might nope. pair better with Deadpool nope. than it does with Thor. Nope. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 I, I, I don't dislike Taika Waititi. I just don't think he's... Oh, my God, that's twice in this episode you got his name right. I, I, I don't think he's... <laughs> I actually have to agree with James Gunn, um, and I'm paraphrasing. He wasn't yeah. he wasn't prepared to do the movie, and I I do get the feeling that he is a little too fly by the seat of his pants. Yeah, and I don't know. Like go into it with a with a very broad picture of what he thinks he wants to accomplish, and then it's just like, oh, we'll see where it leads us. Yeah, and then that's the movie that they end up making, and sometimes that can be. Fun. Like, right? I, I've been parts of those projects that are 48 hour film festival things where it's like you have a loose script, but then on set you start coming up with these great ideas and you kind of it shifts and moves in a certain direction. I don't know that, you know, major blockbuster movie franchises like Marvel and these characters are the types of things that you can do that. Again, I love Ragnarok. I really love Ragnarok. So, Chris, I'll, I'll say this. I. I don't know what it takes to, to direct a movie, right? I'm, right? I've never directed a movie. But I can tell you, like, if a story's bad or not, right? Uh, fiction, nonfiction, I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. And I think he struggles with telling a story. Um, and that's, like, super neutral. I'm not trying to take – I'm not even trying to take a shot. I, I just feel no, like – I understand. I just feel like – you're, you're struggling to, to tell the story and to show the story. Um, and I'll end it with this. So the director of Blade, uh, the, the one they previously had, has left the, the project. He's now going to be an exec executive producer. And he only had 90 pages of, of script to go with. Yeah, I heard. And the average Marvel movie has like 120 or something like that pages. So does... 20 or 30 pages make that big of a difference? And if so, Taika Waititi may be in the, the lower end of that range. And his his what he's able to produce, it's apparent that's the, that's the deficiency. His storytelling is not good. He may have a pretty good vibe. He may have a pretty good, like... Uh, uh, what? Cinematic eye. Yeah, his cinematic yeah. eye may be great. Same thing with James Gunn. Like, and that's my criticism of him also. The story doesn't, it's not cohesive for me. So 
if, if I take away my comic eye and just use my, like, the, I want, I want you to tell me the story. I'm not that intrigued. I'm not that impressed by it. And the, the thing that the like directors like those two get is that they're going against the norm of, of the action part of the, of the comic like genre. Um, yeah. It just doesn't tell a good story. So that, that would be that would be my feedback. On the opposite end of that spectrum, and this is my final point, She-Hulk. It's She-Hulk has always been funny. There's always a comedic like like part of the story. And yeah. people are like criticizing the comedy of the story, like her twerking or whatever. Well, that's part of the character. So you, you can't you can't have it both ways there. So Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode. In case you ignored my previous instructions, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to tickle that little like button. And if you have something to say, you can drop it in the comment down below. We'll see you on the next one.